So it's been a little over a year now since I bought my Oculus Quest 2. I thought I'd do a follow-up review. Uh, first, I figured I'd start with some disclosures of how I got the stuff. The Quest I bought with my own money um, had some parts replaced under warranty. The battery pack up came from a recycling pickup, so I didn't pay anything for that. The Nickel Mail Hydrate AA batteries, I bought those with my own money. This USB Type A to Type C cable that came from a recycling pickup. And then the VR cover facial interface was from the initial recall of the facial interface for the Quest 2. So I got lucky and got that one for free from Facebook because of that recall. Overall, I've learned a few things about VR since I was new to VR. Um, so I think I'll start with that. From my experience, the best play experience is in a four foot play space. And then outside of that four foot play space, you want to have a, basically a room that's a 10 inch cube. So 10 foot wide, 10 foot deep, and then 10 foot tall. The 10 foot tall will kind of depend on, on how tall you are personally. I'm six foot tall and in my current play space, the ceilings I believe are about nine foot. So if I'm really getting into it and I'm not paying attention, I can actually jump high enough to punch my ceiling tiles, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> um, some other stuff that I guess I forgot to cover in my initial disclosure is I also use a just a standard plastic computer chair mat for my play space. That basically is what I outline for my play space, which gives me a four by four square. I think it's a little smaller than that technically, but it's pretty close. That's been a great way to kind of help me keep within the boundaries since I can tell the difference between the plastic floor mat and the carpet on the floor. Another thing a person could use would be like a piece of um, laminate flooring if you had maybe a scrap of laminate flooring. You could also use a piece of carpet but I found that carpet on carpet tends to want to shift around, so that doesn't work the best. The computer chair mat I found seems to be the best of all of them because the computer chair mats have spikes in the bottom. They're real short, but they're designed to kind of lock that mat into place more than just the friction would give you. Uh, another thing regarding safety, definitely, um, as I believe the instructions even point out, you know, definitely when you're playing, keep in mind to drink some water and occasionally do some stretches. It's easy to uh, lose track of what you're doing over time with the immersion that you get with some of these games. Um, from there, I think I'll talk about the headset itself. I am definitely more disappointed in it now than I was initially from a build quality standpoint. Um, it's definitely really uncomfortable to wear without some adjustments. One of the ones oops, that I didn't know about until I happened to find a video is the fact that these can be rotated and twisted up and down. So that'll help if you're getting uneven pressure on your face. You can either tilt it up or down accordingly. The strap, I need to buy a better one. It's tolerable, but it's definitely not fun. I have a feeling I'd be a lot happier if I had a better strap than this. Um, the facial interface, the stock one, is definitely terrible compared to the VR cover one. But it is tolerable. A lot of that comes down to angling the headset, having it so it's not putting pressure points on your face in more than one spot than another. I'm not impressed with their solution to the skin irritation. I honestly haven't tried this, but I know someone else that was using one of these and occasionally 
it would come loose or it slip and they'd have to take the headset off and adjust it. So I think that's kind of a, a lousy way to fix that problem. Granted, I'm not saying they should give everyone free VR covers because that's not reasonable either, but I think rather than coming up with this fix, they should have just done something to improve the facial interface. And the only reason I have the new facial interface is because they had to replace my headset. I would say on average for the last year, I've been probably playing an hour or two a day. And the issue I ended up having with my original headset was it started getting really hot. Um, like you could hear the fans constantly running and the battery life was just terrible. I, it was down to the point where I could only play on the headset's internal battery for about an hour versus the two hours this one's currently giving me. And then on top of that, this pack, not the nicest pack, but uh, this output port's supposed to be 2.1 amps, which wasn't even enough to maintain the charge. I was actually still draining probably about a percent every two minutes plugged in versus basically a percent every almost 30 seconds on the failing battery. So that was that was frustrating. The warranty process actually was pretty good. Since I had mine replaced I don't know, maybe two months ago. They didn't have the stock issues they did, like let's say six months ago. Because I know six months ago, people that were having issues with their headsets, I think the turnaround time was like a month, which was pretty bad. But this took a week. It honestly took them longer to ship it back to me than it did to take them to process the warranty claim. Um, if... If you have issues with your headset and it's under warranty, to expedite your warranty claim process, ideally you want to try factory resetting your headset before you open a RMA. Because, well, I mean, you could also lie if you wanted to, but um, it's just easier to just do what, do what they ask, you know, do the right thing. But, um, one one thing that I found was if you told told the support agents that you went through the warranty steps or not I'm sorry, not the warranty steps, the uh, troubleshooting steps that that they recommend on their site, which is basically uh oh uh, clearing clearing out like your Wi Fi and guarding settings first and then doing a factory reset and reinstalling everything if that doesn't help. That if if you do that the service agents are more receptive to you and then they'll just they'll just skip that step and go straight towards the warranty replacement usually. They will ask some questions too, but um yeah, I found that if if I'd already tried the troubleshooting steps and told them that I already tried the troubleshooting steps, they were a lot more helpful. So I had to get the headset replaced, which is um frustrating. I don't feel like that this battery in here should be only good for a year worth of use. I also had, I think now which controller it was. Yeah, it was this controller. Um, the right controller, I had issues with the joystick where if I wanted to rotate to the left or right, it would just randomly rotate me the opposite direction. So that, that was really annoying. Um, it was an intermittent issue. So I ended up finally breaking down towards the end of my warranty and just doing the RNA. Because I couldn't get to reproduce consistently enough to say, hey, yeah, you know, this is what's going on. So what ended up happening was I contacted Facebook and I was like, this controller is acting up. It's not doing it consistently. So, you know, I can't, I can't say like, oh, it's, it's broken. You know, it, it doesn't work right. But 
at the same time, it was happening consistently, inconsistently enough to be like, all right, this is, this is ridiculous. And I should have probably read through the troubleshooting steps before contacting support because that did cause some difficulty for me. But basically, after I confirmed with support that I went through the process of unpairing and repairing this controller, or well, I guess the defective one, this is the new one. Once I went through the process of unpairing and repairing the defective controller and then trying to reproduce the issue, that was what they needed from me to verify that it'd be eligible for a warranty replacement. And that one also took about a week. So that made it a interesting week because I tried a few times playing uh, <laughs> with just the left controller. Um, so yeah, overall, you know, I, I feel... I don't know. I feel like if they were going to cheap out on the device like this, they should have made a higher end version to sell. Made a Quest Pro, like everyone wants them to do. You get what you pay for. The price point is fair. I, I know a lot of the more enthusiast people, they're just going to replace all the stock stuff anyways. Um, it's just... I felt with the short period of time that I had my Quest 1... I felt that that thing had a way better build quality. It was way more comfortable to use. The adjustments made the the usage more enjoyable since like with this, with the IPD, if you want it outside of the three settings they have, then you have to get creative. So that's been a big disappointment to me. I am happy I got the VR cover um, under the, the facial interface recall. That was nice. I was running it with the, uh, I don't know what you call this, the nose piece that, that kind of blocks out more light at first, which was nice. I really liked it, but in my case, I was having issues with fogging over, so um, I think some of that has to do with the high humidity of my state during the summer. I haven't tried it in the winter again, but so that, that's been fine. I've been happy with that VR cover. The uh, rechargeable batteries have been nice. I have heard some people complain about the fact that since uh, nickel metal hydrate batteries run at a lower voltage, that may cause problems with your controllers operating properly. It's not going to damage them, but it's just not going to be sending the amount of voltage that the controller is designed for, which is 1.5 volts, versus these, which I don't know if they're labeled. Yeah, they're labeled. Um see if I can get that in focus. There we go. So these are just standard 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride batteries. These have been good. Um, generally I'll let them run down pretty low, usually like 20-30%, or at least what the controller reports is 20-30%. If I'm going to do anything competitive, then usually I don't let them go below 50, because I mean, these, I think, I think I bought these from the hardware store for like $15, and there's two more in the controller still. So I don't really care if if I wear them out faster by charging them too many times. I mean, I've probably only charged them 50 times so far at the most, and I haven't really noticed any degradation in performance, so that's been good. I, I'm definitely glad I bought those. I think there are nicer ones you can buy, but... I don't know if the price justifies it or not. Like, I think they make lithium ion rechargeable double A's that actually put out 1.5 volts because there's like a buck boost converter built into them to increase the voltage or maintain it. Um, this battery pack's been okay. I got it for free, so, you know, I, I'm not going <laughs> to complain too much. Um... It'd be nice to have one that could strap to the back of the um, the head strap a little nicer, but I don't know. I, I don't really play that much. I, I'd rather just be able to play off the internal battery because it just gets irritating when you have all this stuff connected to you and stuff. So 
That's all I really have to say for that. I'd say if you want to play longer, try to find a head strap that has either a built-in battery pack or find a head strap that's bulky enough where you can find a battery pack that'll kind of fit the form factor of the head strap. Because with this one, when I had it strapped on with some Velcro, it was kind of up there like this. And it was just kind of weird and awkward. Um, plus, I was using this extra long cable because it's the only one I have since this is USB-A. This cable's definitely been nice. Uh, it's, it's just a standard USB 3.0. Uh, a to C cable. It's uh, definitely been great for transferring files even though I feel like I feel like they can improve the file transfers on methodology on this. I haven't tried that cable for AirLink. My understanding is basically, or no, I'm sorry not AirLink, um, <laughs> uh, just regular Link. It, uh, my understanding is basically any USB 3 cable will work for Link. So this this should be adequate, but it's just not something I wanted to try. One thing kind of on the topic of the cable that annoys me about this headset, I get that it's Android based and I understand how Android security and stuff works, but I wish I could either train the headset to recognize my computer and I could just plug it in directly without having to fiddle with it because it's really annoying trying to plug cable in and then stepping within range of your guardian to be able to turn on the headset, plug the cable into your headset, and then it, it allow file transfer. Alternatively, what would be really nice, especially if they could build that into the uh, Oculus software, would be a way to do uh, file transfer over network. I'd love to just be able to set this up as a network drive and just be like, okay, wake the headset up out of standby, go to my computer, go to the network drive, click on it, look for the files I want, and then just copy them over wireless. Maybe there's a way to do that. I don't know. Maybe you could side sideload something in with SideQuest, but I don't think it's like a standard feature from the limited research I've done. So I think that covers most of it. Um, in my opinion, this is more the more of a toy than a tool. I I would like to see Facebook come up with with a pro model or something that's of higher quality. I feel I'd be willing to pay a little bit more for the headset if if I didn't have to fiddle around with replacing parts and changing stuff out just to make it more comfortable to use. Also, I feel like it would be nice if they made rechargeable controllers or even go a step further and make this whole setup wirelessly rechargeable. It definitely make a good upsell if if they had like a docking station or a base station where I could just plop my headset in and then put my controllers next to it and be like, okay, well, you're wirelessly charging now. I don't have to worry about it. Um, if they do that with the controllers though, hopefully they'd be nice and make the battery user replaceable. I guess so that, that'd be one side thing. It, it'd really be nice if more stuff had user replaceable rechargeable batteries in them. Um, I don't know, I guess, how much it costs Facebook to deal with RMAs for batteries that failed under warranty. But honestly, if, let's say, my battery failed, and even if I was under warranty, I'd probably be tempted just to pay 20, 30, 40 bucks, whatever it would be, for just another battery. You know, maybe this would be like a magnetically attached thing that you plop off and put the new battery in but yeah I don't know it's it's definitely it's definitely not a bad buy you you do get a good value for your money considering the power of the hardware and the fact that these have AirLink support now which is uh, kind of cool I just I just don't think this is more than anything than a toy in my opinion I don't see 
how a person would be able to use this for productivity very comfortably without jumping through a bunch of hoops and by the time you spend all this other money and stuff upgrading the the strap and the facial interface and buying battery packs and doing all this stuff I, I feel like there's probably just a better headset solution out, out there if you want to use it for productivity stuff for gaming it's fine um, but yeah hopefully those opinions aren't too controversial <laughs> I, I definitely understand why people would probably disagree with me that this is a toy but yeah feel free to leave a comment um, have a discussion and uh, thanks for watching